Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, welcome to a new video. It's 2022. I don't even, I think I looked on my YouTube channel last night. The last video I did was like a month ago. Um, you know, the, the update video didn't get like a ton of views. But uh, anyway, um, if you're curious why I was gone so long, you can watch that video and find out. But anyway, I'm back. Um, so I, I was trying to figure out a way to get back into this. And honestly, like if you haven't done YouTube in a while, it actually does feel like work. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm just saying that it's, it's, uh, there's effort involved and it takes energy and focus. And, you know, you're, you're like this, I'm going to be doing a video on Simon DeMeo or Simone DeMeo. Uh, and I'll explain why in a second, but, um, well, I'll, I'll explain now, and then we'll get into the video. Usually I do like a little five-minute preamble to any any video that's going to be slightly long. But um, yeah, so so Simone, I'll, I'll say, um, is a guy that I follow on Instagram. I, I really like his art, and I love seeing his posts. And, you know, if you want to stand out in a crowd, a great way to do it is to be someone that really just fills the people that follow you with sort of joy and entertainment and, you know, like cool art. This guy really just, just kind of hits all those notes. I was trying to think back over the last like couple of years of um, not newer artists per se, but what I mean is is artists that maybe I, I, I hadn't followed so closely in terms of um, like their comic book career. Um, and, and then, you know, you discover them maybe on Instagram first or, or so, somewhere online. And, uh, it was, uh, Mateo Scalera. I'd, I'd seen Mateo's work in books before that, but like Mateo was a guy that when he was doing, um, convention circuit, he would do these amazing, um, wash, uh, paintings that were just great. Like wash, like ink wash commissions that were awesome. And whenever he would go to a con and he would post the five or six, pieces that he had done i mean they were just like i always was like saving them <laughs> i was like these are awesome uh and jorge jimenez is like that i think jorge jimenez really delivers like some interesting stuff so i think it's been so long i can't remember exactly but i i was gonna do a series of videos on digital comic book artists i for for a long long time i generally had focused on traditional work but but there's really really great digital stuff going on and and some people that that use it in really incredible ways, and and because I do Patreon, and I have so many people that follow me on Patreon, and by the way, what's up, Patreon peeps? Thank you so much for supporting me there. Um, uh, oh, a lot of them are working digitally, so it's 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 I I'm working digitally right now. And then let me let me give quick updates on on Crystal Planet and Blaster Kid. So I'm almost done with Crystal Planet. I, the the last two issues are the hardest to draw. They're the funnest to draw, but it's the most shit. Um, there's a huge war going on in the book and I'm having to draw like tons of characters. I mean, the I'm, wor I'm working on a page right now, just in one of the panels, it's like a six panel page. I think I've already drawn like 32 characters, something like that. in like these space tanks, it's a bunch of, it's a bunch of stuff to draw. So the pages are taking me longer than I really want them to, but it's, it's refining my skills. Honestly, it's, it's a weird thing. Cause, cause, uh, I hate when you are like going into like a third day working on a page, but there's, there's really not much I can do. There's a lot of shit to draw and I just have to, I just have to do it. There's a, there's a professional approach that I take to stuff. And it's something that, that honestly, like I don't consider myself a role model for anyone to be hundred percent honest. But if you, if you want to pull anything from me as a role model, it's whatever I start, I finish, whatever I finish, I finish as good as I can. Um, and those two things you can put in the bank and they will always pay off for you. But it's just, I don't, I'm not going to take a job and shit it out. I'm not going to take a job and quit. I'm not going to take a job and, and do half-assed work. There, there was a point when I was working on Crystal Planet earlier where I, I definitely tried to do, I, I call it the McFarlane approach, which is you, you don't set a timer literally, but in your mind you go, I'm going to give this page like eight hours and in eight hours, I have to have it done. That's like, that's professional demands of the job of doing comic books and dealing with deadlines. But as you get into harder pages, Todd, Todd, 
at, at that time was working on Spider-Man, which is a single character book. Uh, generally speaking, if I was going to guess, there probably wasn't any more than maybe 10 to 12 characters on a page. Crystal Planet, on the other hand, is anywhere from six to it's it usually is seven and eight panel pages. And, you know, if there's three or four characters on that page, you might have to draw like 28 characters just on a single page. And as we got into the sci-fi battle where it's two, you know, two armies fighting, it's a lot of stuff to draw. But again, it's 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 you couldn't really ask for a better warm up to to get used to drawing than something like that. So anyway, all right, let's get into Simone Simone DeMeo. I love this guy's stuff. Um, his Instagram is actually quite interesting because you, if you go back and look at the earliest posts, you'll really see a very fun evolution. He's always drawn really, really cool, but man, his style has just gotten better and better. So now I don't, I don't know who colored this particular page, but he posts a lot of black and white art, and we're just gonna enjoy the art and have some fun. And Simone, if you ever see this, you're awesome. I love what you're doing, and again, you, your your Instagram posts always are fun for me to see, and I always am excited to see them, so thank you. All right, let's go, full screen. We used to call this Carlos mode back in the old days, but maybe the old days are back. <laughs> All right, so this is Spider-Man, I think. I don't know. I like We'll say it's Spider-Man, but maybe it's a different Spider-Man. I'm not good at this stuff. You know that. You know that about me. I'm a dummy. <laughs> I'm only good at a couple of things. <laughs> this is nice, though. God dang. As, as a penciler now, I can appreciate these on levels that, that I once um, only thought that I was appreciating them on. Now it's a deeper level. That is that is a thing. You know, I, I talk about this a bit more on Patreon. Um, this has got a little bit of an Eli Kushner vid vibe i actually did a really nice video on eli or Ilya um on inst or on patreon uh, a week or two back he's he's great um but uh yeah, there's levels to understanding because you can understand stuff on what i would consider a um just like a base level meaning that like i get it like you know this you move the camera around, you do this, you do that. And and uh, when you actually have real experiences problem solving through things like drawing pages, um, it, it really does, it it's, it's, it's can be overwhelming for people that are learning because you're trying to figure out how to do this on your own. Again, it's it's very simple to look at something and, and uh, break it down. Like You all know I'm a huge music fan. I see people talk about music all day. You go listen to their songs and they're trash. <laughs> it is that is some funny shit i'll be like i'm gonna check this motherfucker out this guy's got a big mouth online then you go hear their stuff and you're like oh man all right stick to commenting on posts because you no one is gonna want to hear this music all right this is nice it, you know there's an there's another artist that uh i did a video for on um Patreon. I'm trying to think of his name. He's really good. He does Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. His name escapes me right now. He's he's kind of one of those artists that 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 I had heard his name and I had seen his work and liked it. And then people kept saying, "Oh, you should do a video on on him." And uh, man, I really started to dive deep into his work. He was great. This is so nice. Is a big fan of like some of. Uh, I, I really like value on pages. It's he's got a really interesting kind of like filter on it where you're getting that almost like three D effect with the red and the blues. It's pretty cool, man. I try to avoid the personal photos on it. I didn't have time to really pick through this. This is interesting. I wonder if this is for IDW. Oh, I don't remember who has the license for um Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It you know what? I wonder if this actually is a three D book. I wonder with 3D glasses if this shit pops. It looks pretty cool, honestly, just like this, though. It's a little blurry, but my eyes aren't any good anymore, so... Everything looks a little blurry. <laughs> I have my sweet spots. I can still see good close-up. This is interesting. All this stuff is like... Either my eyes are super trash this morning or everything's blurry. All right. This is cool. 
it's it's fascinating for me to see how these styles have all evolved because it's it's you know and, and it doesn't necessarily mean that that they were influenced by these different artists but it's like um you know one artist does one thing and then another artist will pull from that and then they they get popular based on on their sort of combination of things and then other artists pull from that and you wonder how like when you see someone's work how far back their their knowledge base goes like are they a fan of the whole chain are they only a fan of like like one or two artists that are kind of more currently using it it's an interesting thing I think part of what it is is these because these are Instagram posts, they're lower resolution. So as we're zoomed in, they feel like they have the soft focus. I'm also sitting about 10 inches from a Cintiq. This is nice. Okay, so he does work for IDW. Dude, he can make bank at DC. Honestly, DC or Marvel? I would go DC over Marvel, to be honest. I think DC pays better. Um, but... Uh, Marvel's got the characters. That's the thing with Marvel. I, I I feel is is that the appeal to Marvel is just that they have such a great canon of characters. DC does too, but for me personally, I definitely think that there's more characters at Marvel that that I I would get super excited about. This is a nice shot right here, man. It's great. But yeah, hopefully you've all been doing well. I I really I've been trying to get sort of the mental whatever you want to call it, like, like get over the hump of getting back on YouTube. It's been harder than, than, um, I would have thought. I didn't have much to say, to be honest. It's like the death of, uh, my brother-in-law pretty much made me speechless. So. Uh, 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 uh. This is really nice. <clears throat> this is fucking cool. And then we had COVID in my house on top of it. Like, I'm not one of those people that complains about shit online. So was, I had someone ask me about something recently and I told them what was going on. But they, it's no one knows because I don't like I don't like every beat of my life isn't on Instagram or Facebook. Oh, I had the hiccups. Feel sorry for me. <laughs> but yeah, we had COVID in my house, too last two weeks so it was quarantine and all kinds of bullshit the good news is is that i gained superpowers <laughs> and i worked through the whole fucking thing that's how much of a boss i am so this is interesting i love seeing people's instagrams all this behind the scenes so this is yeah these have got to be like pages that he's doing 3d I, I've talked to Kelsey a few times through um, Twitter. He still doesn't have his phone set up. It's so funny. I've tried to call him. Not a lot, but, you know, like, I I was tired of, like, direct messaging him, and so I gave him a call. His phone still doesn't freaking work. <laughs> but anyway, we're, I, I, I made the announcement on um, Instagram, but uh, Sarah Frazetta is coming on for Frank's birthday. We're going to do it on the 6th. I think it's the 6th. Sunday the 6th. We're going to do a big Frazetta show. Um, and she's got actually a couple of pretty big surprises um, for us. It's going to be really, really cool. And it's not like some cheesy announcement. Like, you know, uh, you know, but it's it's something that I think is going to be really, really cool for people. So we're going to do that. But I, I kind of wanted to try to get one super fun Sunday. And whoa, sorry. Um, uh, before then, um, if possible, with Kelsey. But I, I don't think I'm going to do one this weekend. Like I said, I needed to warm up and kind of get used to sort of talking to other people again. Oh, this is nice. This is really interesting. Yeah, it's good shit, man. Chunky thighs on this dude. This is great. This is really cool too. There's another. Oh, Jeff Deckel, I think is his name. He's really good too. He kind of does more. He's he reminds me of like Josh Middleton, where it's like a lot of headshots, and and Ben Oliver was doing that, like where. 
I like to see a little bit more. He's still great, but it's, I'm, I'm definitely, it was funny, someone sent me a cover, a variant cover that a really good artist had done, and I was like, did they do the interiors? And and they didn't believe so, and I was like, eh. Just not, I, I'm just not, I, like a great cover is cool, but I'm kind of more into like, I think mean, you, you get to see more personality from an artist when they do interiors. It's just there's, because of the different challenges and even kind of lame stuff that they have to draw, it, it, it just creates a different vibe for me that I actually find kind of more enjoyable. Um, but, uh, you know, a good cover is cool. But, yeah, I don't feel like I'm getting to know their their art as well. Vader's got very childlike hands here. They, they, they seem a little underwhelming compared to the power of Vader. This is nice. Really thick eyelashes, but it looks great. I kind of miss the whole Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle thing. I've never really been into them. Not that I'm not into them, but I'm just saying that like like it's never I've never really followed it. The drummer of my band was into them. <laughs> It's, it's funny that this sky in this building reminds me of Vegas, but the rest of it doesn't look like Vegas. But this has got like a little bit of like a Vegas vibe to me. Oh, this is awesome. God, what is the, my mouse is a piece of shit. I bought a brand, brand new mouse and it sucks. All right, I'm going to use my stylus for my Cintiq because this is pissing me off. All right, there. My mouse is so laggy. Like, it's pretty bad too. This is cool. This is we've seen this piece. It's like half of a spread. Wolverine's hair is getting super fancy. It was funny. I had brought this up in a recent video, but uh, there was an artist that used to work for Marvel that was really good. That kind of like I think he went into video games, but his name is Adam Polina. But um, this this stuff has a little bit of a retro vibe, and it doesn't look like Polina stuff, but it it reminds me of that era where it was like um, Chris Bacalo was working on the X Men. Um, you had like Andy Kubert or Adam Kubert was kind of working in that style. Polina, like it was like a lot of hybrids of, of one particular thing. This is cool. This sort of makes me think of, um, Jonathan Glapian has been doing some really, really great, um, kind of like not sketch of the day kind of things, but just a series of drawings. He's, he keeps busy, I think in his downtime when Capullo isn't like feeding him stuff. They're really good. And, and man, his, um, his sense of uh, form is excellent. So it's, it's like, he's ready to draw comics. Like, honestly, like he's got an unusual style, but he could totally do a book, um, and work out the kinks. So hopefully at some point he does it cause it'd be really good. It's, it's a, it's a very, um, interesting style. Good shit. You can kind of like, you can kind of tell when artists are into like similar things as you, you know, like you see it in their stuff. This is really, really interesting. I hadn't seen a lot of these um, kind of more 3D pieces. This is nice. So let's we're gonna go a little faster here for a second, and um, get to some more recent stuff. I think we're going. We should be going in order where it's getting more recent. This is cool, man. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, this is a great page. Wow, really, really nice. It was funny is because I haven't really looked at comics in like the last couple of months, uh, just because I've been so busy working. And so when I'm, you know, I mean, I, I basically draw all day. Um, but I was curious when, when I knew I was going to do this video, I was like, I'm, I want to see how many characters this guy has to draw per page. Cause I'm telling you the, I, I'm very, very conscious now of panel count and like how much stuff is on like particular pages. So this is a pretty dense page. He was smart and just did headshots, a little bit of fist. <laughs> 
I think that's that's the interesting thing too. Is I feel I feel in a weird way like I'm kind of like where J. Scott Campbell was on um, Gen Thirteen, the miniseries, like when he did the pit issues. I think those were issues three and four, where it's like you've you've kind of worked out the kinks of drawing, and then now it's like you start to you can kind of like. Um, control things and manipulate like the level of detail and stuff like that and uh it can get you in hot water because it's like you're trying you're trying to like because you've got skill and experience you cannot now draw better and so you want to kind of show that off but when you do that it starts to take longer too and you're like oh man like this is a slippery slope because you want to have a balance um uh, I did a I do a monthly question and answer for Patreon and someone had asked about economy of the page and it kind of hits on that where where you want to pick a style that's really really fun for you to draw in and that you can also deliver work at, at whatever a consistent pace but whatever pace that you've chosen to set you know if you're going to do four books a year tr try to come up with a style that you can do four books a year that are going to look consistent and it's not like you went all in on six pages and then um you know copped out on the, the the last you know whatever it is my books are 25 pages each of the crystal planet stuff and i will i will do the um the next fan art video for blaster kid um just like i'm really trying to get crystal planet finished i'm so close to the end i just want it done um i just i underestimated how long um a war would take to draw <laughs> you don't know how long a war takes to draw until you actually have to sit down and do it <laughs> You're like, oh man. Some great poses. This is really good right here. Let me see if I can grab a brush. Wait. Uh, this figure right here. I like that pose. This is awesome too, actually. This is, see, and this is actually smart. So I'll, I'll give a little tip for when you draw fight scenes, because I made the mistake of not doing this. Um, on, on my, the first fight scene that I drew, um, but but I, I knew it didn't look right. When you do a fight scene, it actually really will benefit you to have a lot of stuff coming in and out of the panel. Do not literally fit people in the panel where you've got characters comfortably in the, the shot. It looks too stiff and it doesn't seem to capture it, but if you can have, you know, arms coming out, legs going out, something coming in, you know, it depends if you're, how many characters are involved. It's two, um, but even, even with two characters, the, the kind of the more that falls out of the screen, um, it actually does make it um, kind of more interesting. This is a great pose too. And this, this is nice. It's all really good. This guy can really draw well. He's a really, really good penciler. Oh, classic. I always ask this when I see this. Would the dinosaur and Penny be in your bat cave? Let me know in the comments below. This is an important question. It 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 falls almost to the level of what's in the pouches. Do you know what's in the pouches of your character that you draw? But I, I have to know from every comic book penciler. You putting in the dinosaur and the penny or no? <laughs> I hate to be controversial. <laughs> I would do it. That's just me though. But I I like them. I think I don't know. I I don't really ever foresee myself ever drawing a Batman book to be honest. And if I did, I would write it myself. So. That's cool. We saw. I think we saw this in like pencil. Yeah, this guy's good. Oh yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, this is the. It has a different vibe. It's funny because this building felt like it curved more with the um, sky on the other shot. I, I think it still does a little bit, but. This is nice. It's it's interesting because like I'm going like. This looks traditional with digital. Maybe he works in both. I wasn't really paying that close of attention um, before. And then and maybe it's commissions or something. Let's see. Yeah, you know, it could be a blend of the two. This could even be like do a, do a shade, not do a shade, but like some sort of like, um, like Zipatone or whatever they call it. I can't think of the name of it. Um, yeah, so good. Some really, really talented artists out there or, or just skilled, you know. These guys have worked really hard. Guys and girls have worked really hard on their work and are doing some killer stuff. 
I always plug um, a few different artists, but most people, I think, at this point follow Lois H. I call her Lawash. <laughs> She's great. I actually follow her Patreon. It's it's superb. I also I follow another guy too. I don't know how to say his name. I, I it's like Guiz something like that. He's really good too. But uh yeah, I I have two Patreons that I, I follow right now currently. But they're good. It's like good good information for your brain. Guiz is how I say his name, but I I'm sure it's wrong. She's cute. You see, I don't like. It's hard to see because the these aren't. Um, man, it's a great venom. It's really wild looking, but it's very cool too. Um, it's hard sometimes to tell when you're looking on a computer and it's low like low resolution and there's like some of the screen tone kind of stuff on it it's it's difficult to tell what the original piece is which is good i mean honestly it's funny because again going back to sort of like my um obsession with music it it's the same thing you have these people that are clinging to like analog and like oh you know you have to have real amps and all this stuff but technology has moved so far in advance there's some really really incredible you know, virtual stuff going on that's really good, man. And it it made me come back to comic book art and kind of really reassess like what's going on with everything. But I still am doing Blaster Kid traditionally, but digital is nothing to just dismiss. This, gonna have to this looks like it was drawn digitally the at least the fire escapes and stuff like that the line is so dead weight this is nice and there's some artists that mix it up i mean i've talked about this before like um jason fabok does uh both he'll do some pages digitally and then he does some traditionally generally speaking he decides based on um you know, if it's a splash page or something with a lot of characters that the original might be worth money. So this is nice. So seeing that this starts to make me doubt like the other pages where I go, well, here's a shot of an original, so maybe he doesn't. And this is crazy. He actually has the old school <laughs> zip. I wonder if he's buying it or if he's making it. I haven't seen this stuff in years. Like, I have a bunch, but I mean, I'm talking about like, the last time I saw it was at Comic-Con, maybe five to eight years ago. Um, the there was a booth that sold a lot of Copics, um, and uh, they had a bunch of different screen tone packages. They're very expensive, though. I was shocked. It was like, you know, it it would cost a lot of money to use it. God damn, this is cool. Man, it's nice. Uh, that's really cool. I I don't know what it is about the Hulk. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know why I like the Hulk so much. Or just do. He's an interesting character. But he's kind of boring, you know? Like, I don't know, is there a lot to the Hulk? Probably not. Something about him and, like, old school Spider-Man, I think, are, are very cool. The new stuff, the new Spider-Man stuff is good, too. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that, like, there's... This has a, like... He's really actually got a very nice blend of contemporary and, and some sort of vintage things. It's always good to have a little, like, one foot in the classics. This is great. God damn. Dude, this is so awesome. Oh, my God. Man, that's great. But this is kind of like I was talking about Matteo Scalera earlier. Like, Matteo would do a lot of pieces like this. It, it cons. And these would be, like, commissions. And he'd usually post, like, six or seven photos of each piece. But this is just badass. Man, that is awesome. Wow. That is really cool. Bigger is better. It's been a while, but I remember now. Yeah, that's great. Uh, 
<laughs> this venom is fun. Most most artists draw a pretty good venom. That's what I've found is that they're 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 all different, and some of them get very almost um, amorphic. I think that's the word. Just that it's like the structure is very like almost li liquidy. But generally speaking, venom holds up pretty good in a lot of different styles. This is nice. I haven't really drawn too much of this type of type of material. I like it though. It would be fun fun to to try my hand at this. You have to have a good eye for proportion. And and obviously understand perspective pretty good, but it's a lot of shapes. But I'm I'm a pretty my eye feels pretty balanced with stuff, but it drifts occasionally. This is nice. So he's he's working on it digitally, but it's hard to say what what uh, the embellishments are. This is cool. He looks pleasant. <laughs> It's it's part of it is it's not not just that he's kind of got the smirk because I don't think I'm covering it up with my hand I'm just looking at his mouth and the nose down, um, but it, like I'm, I kind of put my hand over this area. It's it's uh, what what makes him look kind of um, fun like nice is it's his eye shape and his ears they look happy um, so it's sending a weird mixed signal because again if you cover up this area right here and just look at his mouth he looks super pissed but his eyes and ears make him look like he's um more happy well this is fun i haven't done one of these types of videos in a long time feels like forever this is cool this reminds me a little bit of eric Powell. He has, I think it's called Hillbilly. I bought like six or seven of the issues. I haven't really looked at it too much, but um, I think it was a, it's a fun idea for a book. Hillbilly have been sitting around forever. Finally, someone did a creepy book about hillbillies. I've seen real hillbillies when my band was on tour in West Virginia. Holy shit. Scary. It's right out of freaking, what's that movie called? <laughs> Deliverance. I'll tell the story sometime. It's not appropriate for all videos, but it was crazy. <laughs> we had two. We had two pretty wild stories on tour with. Uh, we'll call it people that live on a different plane of reality, but share the planet Earth with us. The other one was in New Mexico, in the middle of nowhere. It was like literally out of like a horror movie. It was the craziest shit ever. <laughs> But those are the memories that you hold dear. <laughs> this is like this is like Electra when she was twelve. It's cute. It doesn't feel like Electra to me though. Just the costume does. This is cool. Oh, another Hulk. Hey, okay. <laughs> his arm. His arm is so huge. It looks awesome though. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. No. This is cool. Oh, it's kind of a low-res file. All right, I'm going to start wrapping this up because I actually got to get to work. Guess what I get to do? I get to work on the other five panels on my 32-panel first panel page. 32 people on my first panel page. Not only is there like 30 people on the first panel, there's three freaking space tanks that I had to draw. Shit's taking forever. But I'm a baller. I don't even think about it. Honestly, when I'm working on it, I just have to do it. You can't sit and lament. I'll lament in a YouTube video for you all. <laughs> He's got a lot of stuff on this page. Let's count. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. No, it's a lot. This is really good. That's cool. It's a little blurry, but... I saw, this says a little bit of a Sean Gordon Murphy vibe. It's weird, because, like, his Hulk has a little bit of a Tim Sale vibe to me. But, um, this, like, Wolfman guy, I don't know, maybe it's Wolverine. It's hard, hard to tell. Maybe it's Young Sabretooth. Uh, yeah, it's like Sean Gordon Murphy, Tim Sale. I don't again, I'm sure they're, maybe Sean Gordon Murphy is an influence on him. Tim Sale maybe too, but anyway, that's me projecting, as I always say. I really like the way he draws the Hulk's arms. It's 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 a neat 
um, variation. So <laughs> this is at a convention. He's bringing like this Zipatone to a show. That's crazy. And he must be spending a small fortune on that shit. That's crazy. Because look, you can see this is at a show. So he, this is a sketch cover that he did at a show and he actually brought screen tones. That's like next level. That's a big commitment. This guy's coming prepared. A lot of artists don't. He was ready to draw for sure. He came to work, as they say. <coughs> this is that other piece, a little bit of a higher res scan than maybe a lacking one of the layers of color. It's really cool. This is nice. But yeah, big fan of this guy's stuff. Wait, hold on. What did I do? Uh, uh, clubs. Okay. Yeah, this is so interesting. Let me go back to full screen. Yeah, we're so lucky that we get to experience all the works in progress and stuff that people share now, especially as as people that are interested in learning or like seeing like behind the scenes. Oh, this is awesome. Love that little nook. Oh, this is a great page. Man, this is awesome. This is really good. A really, really nice page. It's it's really nicely laid out. <coughs> the only the only thing for for me not to critique it is I, I wish that there was maybe a little bit more darkness behind this guy, but um, I'm assuming that it's hard for me to tell if it's this dude, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but man, that's fucking awesome. This is good too. He's really like these shots and the way that he's got the perspective set up is really, really kick ass. Have a few students trying to learn perspective right now. They're getting frustrated by it, and I just told them, I said, "Look, I, I'm like, you kind of have to. You, it's you're never gonna be able to read like a perspective book and walk away complete. It's just not how learning perspective is. It's the same with like anatomy. It's like you you learn as much as your brain can sort of like take in, and then you have to go out and sort of flex those muscles." And you'll make some mistakes, and you'll have little discoveries, and eventually it's like all the I was I described it as like defragmenting a hard drive, where you know you have all the little boxes, and the green ones are the ones that have fallen into place, and then you have orange that are processing, and red are like out of sync, and it's just like you slowly fill the block of like perspective, and one day it just you you're like I've got enough of it together that I don't need to worry about it anymore. If I really have a difficult like you know some sort of architecture that's you know got all these weird things and stairs that come in and you know something that's like extreme like a cathedral or something then you might have to hit the book and you learn a little bit of the math end of things but one two and three point perspective and drawing stuff like that it's really not that hard it, it, it isn't it's confusing at first but you, you can totally figure it out just got to devote some energy to it. Hands reference. <laughs> that was a funny uh, transition from hands to that like super cartoon character. This is a nice shot. Man, that's great. This is cool. Man, he's really good. Yeah, like when you <laughs> you see this and you're just like, man, I need to draw better. This guy is kicking my ass. Oh, that's good too. His girls are cute. This is nice too. It's weird because I again it's it's me projecting, but but some of this flavor like this, this reminds me a little bit of like Carlos Pacheco um way back. Um and Pacheco was one of my favorite kind of artists uh, early when I started collecting comic books. He was doing some really, really nice stuff. Um, and, and kind of like, I mean, Stuart Immerman kind of would get the vibe. And it, it seems to maybe kind of originate from like Alan Davis a little bit, like this kind of look. But again, it's to say that Simone, you know, pulls from any of that line is, is a stretch. At best, but it's how I kind of catalog it or characterize it. Kind of like this better in black and white, to be honest. 
Yeah, I, I I wish that there was more black around this guy, and that the and like like him yelling was creating some white energy. They could create sort of a flow to this because the rest of the page is laid out so nice. But there's a lot of bright light behind her, and there's this, so it could be something else established that I'm just not aware of. Like he could be waking up in some sort of like lab that's not that room. This is cool, man. This guy is so good. Oh, this is nice. This has a little like of a Sean Gordon Murphy vibe to me. I, you know, what's funny is the book that I was gonna do as a comeback was uh, I was I wanted to go through Tokyo Ghost, but I, I have them all in my storage, and so I was I it would be hard for me to find the comics right now because I have no idea where I put them. They're in a box somewhere, but I bought all of them, even the variant covers on that book. Believe it or not, because the variant covers, some of them were so cool. I was just like. Oh man, that's great. So this should be some good vitamins for your drawing soul <laughs> today. And I'm not going to do a super fun Sunday this weekend because I'm trying to finish some pages. So, you know, the, the, the quicker I get these pages done, the quicker that we can get into Blaster Kid and talking to Kelsey, we're, we're good to go. So it's going to be on like Donkey Kong. Kong. Kong Kong Kong. This is me when I have to draw a page that takes multiple days. <laughs> Why is there so many tanks? I think on one page I had to draw 12 or 15 tanks <laughs> in different panels. So, you know, like have a shot and it's like you've got them coming in. And then another shot where they're flying because they're, they're flying tanks. So I've got them up in the air, you know, like... <laughs> It is crazy. It's too much shit. What did I get myself into? That's what I say. Ooh, this is interesting. So this is a thumbnail. Or it's like uh, some sort of abstract part of the story. My, th my thumbnails are actually slightly tighter than this, funny enough. I knock them out in about 20 to 30 minutes uh, per page. But uh, I actually put a little bit more. But I, I could, like, for me, like, like a, a thumbnail like this, I could actually finish it in the inks now if, if, I, if, I, if I wanted to. I usually will tighten them up for about an hour, an hour a page, and kind of make sure that, like, the eyes and stuff are in. And then, uh, and then I go to inks for, for Crystal Planet. With with Blaster Kid, I've kind of I've decided that I'm gonna let myself spend around twenty to thirty hours a page, so Crystal Planet pages should be taking me anywhere about eight to twelve. So, uh, kind of two to three times more effort in the Blaster Kid pages, and some Blaster Kid pages may spill over into more depending what's on them. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just kind of one of those things. Sometimes you have easy pages, but. I try not to watch the clock. I, I find that if I if I just get into the drawings, this is really cute. There's a new artist that I've started following that um, draws like cats, and he does this really fine like hatching. That's really cool. They're like black cats, but with like really fine hatching. This is cute. It looks like something Sandra Hope would draw. It's funny because this. Sort of looks like his Hulk, but it's like kind of doesn't. Also, it's weird. And you know, and see now this this takes me back to Andrew Robinson. So it's interesting. And Robert Valley, if you don't know Robert Valley, Valley. So so Andrew Robinson to me was this really really cool combination of like Chris Boccolo and maybe Bill Sienkiewicz. Um, he had his own thing going on, but, but like Andrew really kind of, I think was one of the early artists that had sort of the Sean Gordon Murphy style. He was, he was kind of pulling from things like Topi and, and whatnot. And Gordon Murphy at that point really didn't draw like he does now. If you look at early Sean Gordon Murphy, it's, it's, it's quite a bit different. Um, but, uh, yeah. So Andrew Robinson really actually was kind of a forerunner of that, um, that look there he is look at you you talented son of a gun what toys does he have yeah so it looks like maybe he works traditionally and then um finishes them digitally and it works great it looks really really cool 
There's his gritty hulk. And again, these are all off his Instagram. I'll have a link to his Instagram in the um, description box. But this was fun. And, you know, it, it's I've said this before. It's it's a little awkward when you have to do a video of... of uh, like, when I originally started doing YouTube, I had no intention of doing, like, artist spotlight videos. And when I did start getting into them, where we moved from Open That Book to maybe, like, more focusing on a singular artist... Um, I initially was kind of trying to pick artists that maybe weren't alive. It sounds... <laughs> I grim to put it that way but i i didn't want to make anyone uncomfortable because the thing is is it's like you're 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 guessing their techniques you're talking about their work and some artists might not like that you know it's just you have to be really sort of respectful to their stuff and then for me because i'm so random you know i might drift in a video and and talk about a bunch of other shit that's not really focused on them and so it's not even really like a true spotlight on their work um, so these are trickier to do than you might think. It was interesting. I actually had J. Scott Campbell comment on that. He'd watched um, one of my videos on him and really enjoyed it. <laughs> so it was a nice compliment. I mean, like I said, it's a little weird. I, I get the impression that maybe Frank Cho has seen his video. <laughs> it's just weird. And then I have to meet these people at like comic book conventions. And it's like, I'm going to get punched in the face one day. Hey, asshole. You said I work digitally. I'm traditional, bitch. <laughs> Bitchard. He's got a lot of clothes behind him. What, what is going on here? What is all this stuff? I guess it's other people that are signing, put their jackets there. If I do a signing, I'm keeping my jacket on. So there. Oh, this is cool. Some of this stuff, this it's weird. It's it's. I noticed it with um. And again, I can't I can't remember the artist's name. He's a really really good artist that works on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. He's awesome. But he's, he's a newer artist to me. I've only been aware of his work for like the last year or two. Um, but uh, a lot of it really did remind me of like, I, I wish that I was better when I started Crystal Planet because their work really would have actually helped me draw the, I think that particular stuff better. But things like this and just these, it's like kind of fun sci-fi, you know, not, not as heavy duty and dark as some stuff would be really helpful. Now this is a lot of shit to draw. He's really good with layouts. Man, this is nice. He pulled the camera in really well. And, you know, look, this is a lot of freaking panels, too. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen panels. I mean, you could argue that this is kind of one panel. Or, well, actually, I guess the whole shot. This is all kind of one panel. But, and then this is kind of one panel, too. But it looks cool. Man, and then this little great shot. This is a great page. Wow. Look at that. They're busting in through the door right there. That's nice. Oh, this is good, too. Yep. I picked a winner today. This guy's a stud. Good, good stuff. Oh, my gosh. I think Kelsey will like this. This looks like right out of Nora Saga. And Kelsey, if you see this, I'm just going to say it. Astrid? Astrid? It's flying very close to Blaster Kid, okay? We might need to talk. <laughs> There's a lot of letters shared between these two books. <laughs> I saw it last night, and I was like, Astrid? It's like, it's like just missing a few letters, and it's Blaster Kid. How fortuitous is that? But this is great. This is really, really kick-ass. It looks, like, hard to draw. He did a fantastic job on it. My God, it's a lot of stuff. It's really good. Yep, yep, yep. I like it. Oh, that was it. Okay, look. I'm back. This video might have been a little awkward and clumsy, but that's me. <laughs> this video represents me in, in so many ways. But anyway... Simone, Simone, Simon, your work is great, man. Honestly, like I said, you're one of my shining stars on Instagram. I always love seeing your posts, and uh, you stand out in a crowd of many, I, I believe. So, great work. Um, hopefully everyone enjoyed the video. 
Uh, I'll probably come back Monday or Tuesday of next week and do another video. I might, I might go with Tokyo Ghost. I, I wouldn't mind looking at it, to be honest. Sean Gordon Murphy uh, did Tokyo Ghost, just to be clear, in case someone didn't pick up on that from before. But he did... Um, uh, these these DC books, uh, the the horror like vampire books, and um, there's like Nazis in this one series that he did. That's another one of my favorite uh, favorite books that he did. Dustin worked on it too for a while. The same title. I can't think of what it is off the top of my head, but um, it's really really good. But those are some of my favorite uh, Sean Gordon Murphy books too. But it would be fun to look at his stuff. I, like I said, I'm kind of into the whole storytelling thing right now, and I like to see panel-to-panel -panel stuff, so I'm, I'm kind of more focused on that than um, pin up -y kind of things. So anyway, all right, you guys have a great day. I love you all, and it uh, feels good to be back. I'm, I'm happy to have one video down and, and get my life back to somewhat of a normal state. So all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.